there is this messaging, especially with women of, you know, sow your oats and go do it. And we can be like men too. And, you know, get all the one night stands out. And I'm like, I'm not that girl. And so I was like, okay, from this point on, I'm not having sex outside of a committed relationship. And when I say committed relationship, I mean, boyfriend, girlfriend. Hey everybody, fun clip for you today from me and my friend Tanya Rad, who if you don't know her, she is the co-host of On Air with Ryan Seacrest. She is also the co-author of the new book, The Sunshine Mind, that was also authored by Raquel Stevens. She's a very special person to me. I've been friends with her for years. I knew her back when she was searching for love and now she's found love and her story is really compelling. You can listen to the full interview inside the Love Life Club for those of you that are already members. In this clip that I'm gonna show you, she talks about intentionality in early dating. It is a very practical conversation that I had with Tanya and I think you're really gonna enjoy it if you don't wanna waste time in dating because you know what you want and you wanna find somebody else who knows what they want too. Enjoy this clip and by the way, before you see it, if you have not signed up to watch Dating With Results yet, my free one hour training on finding you love this year, go check it out at datingwithresults.com because it is an amazing companion piece to this clip with Tanya Rad. Enjoy. There is this messaging, especially with women of you know, sow your oats and go do it. And we can be like men too. And, you know, get all the one night stands out. And I'm like, I'm not that girl. Mm. I was just never wired that way. And if you are that girl, good on you. And I, I have mad respect, but that was never me. I could never have unattached sex. It just was not in the cards for me. I was always emotionally involved with every single person that I had ever slept with. Yeah. And so... And not every guy like is like that either, by the way. Uh, like, seems like a lot more. There's a decent number of, of guy friends that I have that are very emotional that you know when they start dating someone they get emotionally wrapped up and it becomes about that person so i think there is this assumption that every guy is a so your oats kind of person yeah. and i think that i dated the majority of the others so your oats yeah. guys yeah. yeah but no I, I think there's more than perhaps people know a kind of guy that that feels that same way that it just doesn't feel right to them to sleep around yeah so i think when i had that aha moment it was really this aha moment. And I was like, why I'm doing this to myself. I'm in control. This is my body. This is my life. And so I was like, okay, from this point on, I'm not having sex outside of a committed relationship. And when I say committed relationship, I mean, boyfriend, girlfriend, like this person is committed to me. And so, uh, you know, that really weeds them out real quick. Um, so just walk me through. All right. Practically. Like the same way happen. you, yeah, the yeah, same okay, way you so, did with the meeting people part. Like, what what does this look like to have as a standard for yeah. yourself in a way that doesn't rob you of your warmth, the same flirtatiousness that you're so good at, the kind of part of you that is enjoying dating and being sexual. How did those things coexist with this standard practically when it comes down to it? So I'll give you an example of someone that it obviously was a turn off for, and then someone that didn't care or like was, you yeah. know, didn't care. Uh, so the one that was turned off. So I remember I met this guy at a restaurant, um, gave him my number, uh, at like happy hour or whatever. And he asked if he could take me out on a date. And I said, sure. I gave him my number there at the restaurant and we were supposed to go out. This was like a Monday, Tuesday. We we're supposed to go out that weekend. And he called me just to like chat. And I was like, oh my gosh, nobody does this anymore. And so I thought it was like really cool. So we're chatting and he made like a, a sex joke. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was like some sort of sex joke, you know, not like crude or anything like that. And, uh, I said, Oh, uh, and then that was my way in. I just laid it on. I was like, Oh, well, I don't have sex outside of a committed relationship. And he goes, neither do I. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. But I got player vibes from him. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of got the vibe that like he was just doing what he was doing a lot. And so I was like, oh, wow, you don't either. That's so cool. And you know, whatever. So we finished our chat that night. Never asked me out again. Like never actually mm -hmm. even went out on the date with me. Mm -hmm. Because I think he was like, mm, I'm not going to get what I want. And just didn't follow up, which is fine. 
Um, kind of at least, at least it's not someone wasting your time, right? That, yeah. Or, or pretending to be. Well, he pretended to be something else for five minutes. Yeah. The funny thing is, though, is that he's actually f friendly, like in this like circle network of my boy, my current boyfriend, and so I see him around. <laughs> now, I'm just like, oh, that's so good, because <laughs> I know that he is like the player, you yeah, know, yeah, that yeah. I was totally being bamboozled. But um, so that was really funny, and I was never really shy about expressing that was something that was important to me, and that's actually something that a lot of women have reached out to me. Since I've been sharing all that, that have reached out to me saying that they started they started doing that too because they realized themselves that they were in this perpetual pattern of pain, um, and they wanted to take their lives back into their hands and mm -hmm. be in control. And so that's something that I think a lot of people have really, especially resonated with with my story. Um, How early would you say it? Like when when would you feel was did you wait until I mean in that case. You kind of you found your moment in him making a sexual joke yeah but in general in the absence of that yeah would you say it at the point where things started to get a little more heated or would you say no. it in casual conversation on a date on a date i never said it anybody that i got heated with knew going Already. in where yeah so where how did i you, stood how did you get to that conversation on a date like what would be a way that you would find a way to insert it and how would you say it um so great it's like hard to remember exactly how things went down but i remember i met this one guy he was a guest on my podcast and so he didn't live in la and so we kind of started talking and dating over facetime which is weird because it was like pre pandemic, you know, like yeah. nobody was really, you know, zoom dating was not a thing. Uh, but we started FaceTiming a lot and getting to know each other. Conversations do go in that direction. I think in an easier way than I, than you realize. Um, but when I would talk about my story and my dating life, I would just say, I made this decision to not have sex outside of a committed relationship and some, you know, some guys would say, well, then I got to wife you up tomorrow or like, you know, they would like make a joke about it. I had one, a couple of guys that were like, really, it was like not even a thing. It was like, cool. Were there any that in the moment you could visibly see like he no longer wanted to be there? Yes. Yeah. There was one guy I remember that I dated and I, his nickname was big D cause he like word on the street is he had a big D. Right. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> literal he, right from the start. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he didn't take it so well, not so well. Like again, I right. never well, big was D's not used to that. Big D is not used to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He's he wanted not, the D. That's not his speed. Yeah. It was not his speed. Yeah. Um, but again, like I never was, it was never, I was never treated in a way that made me feel small or made me, I was very, um, I don't know what the word is. I was very assured and and uh, confident in the decision that I had made. So whatever reaction I got, I was totally fine with. Yeah. Yeah. But it was hard. Like some guys, obviously they knew, especially even like with my, my current boyfriend, um, he was really uh, loved it. Like he really admired that about me. He didn't pressure me in any way. Um, but when you really start to date someone, you get physical, you know, and there's ways to be physical without having sex. So for you, sex meant not then feel free to take a left turn, but for you, sex meant penetration, Correct. right? And other things were game. Yes. But it was like, that's not a place I go unless yes. we're in a relationship. Yes. What, how did you kind of make the, dis I mean, it sounds like an obvious question, but at what point, like say with Robbie, did you realize <laughs> or he realized it's cool now because we're in a relationship. Like, did you have that conversation well, out loud? Well, no, it's interesting because I remember we did it before we were in a committed relationship and that was really hard on me. And it wasn't, again, it wasn't, it was just in the heat of the moment, you know? And like, I knew, I think really early on with him specifically, he was it for me. And so I just let myself kind of feel safe in that space and, um, and it was something that he didn't take, you know, lightly either. He never wanted to like go there, and it was me. Like it was all me that went there. I was gonna say, how do you feel? Because because that like I had decided on him, and I felt safe in that space. Is yeah. like from the outside, that sounds like a really dangerous logic. Yeah. Because it's the kind of logic that people use to sort of 
make their mind up about someone before that person is actually invested in them yeah. at the level that they want but them to. But it was to. actually really, it kind of brought us closer because we were able to have that like serious conversation right after about it. And I said, I feel like I let myself down. I made this promise to myself and I feel like I let myself down. I'm, I don't regret it. I'm really happy and, and I'm really happy with where everything's going, but I don't want to do this anymore until we're in a committed relationship. Mm. And he was like really respectful. That's beautiful. Yeah. How long was it between that moment and feel and being in a relationship? Probably a month. Probably a month. And in that time, you were like solid in terms of yeah. I'm not not going to go back to that place. Yeah. Yeah. But I think even the way that there's nuance, even in the way that you approached that, right? Because I would argue, not that you were ever doing it as a tactic, it was always just a standard that you had. But I would argue that in that relationship, it served its purpose because you had, he was already right. very aware of the fact that this meant something to you. Right. And that you weren't up for a situation where it meant nothing. Right. So when you did do it, it didn't take away from the fact that he realized that that was a significant thing for you. Yeah. So regardless of whether you internally felt like you let yourself down, the message received, this was important to you and we just did it. Right. And then afterwards, what I really love about what you said is that I don't, I'm, I'm happy. I don't regret it. You know, I had an amazing time, whatever. I just feel like I let myself down on the standard I have. I think that's actually a beautiful um, I would call it a unique pairing yeah. to say, I'm, I both am not, you know, I feel, you know, I feel something that I don't want to feel about how I let myself down. But I also feel like, you know, I don't want you to think I'm not kind of in a way owning the experience. Right. Yeah. It's really interesting when we make these promises to ourselves, you know, like we're not, we're all imperfect human beings. And I think that, um, we're going to mess up, you know? And I think when you make these promises to yourself, it's okay that you're going to go through life and things are going to shift and things are going to happen. And I think I let myself feel that, you know, like, mm -hmm. okay, I felt like I disappointed myself, but it's okay. And I'm going to move forward. And I still feel really strongly about you. I don't regret my decision. Now that you've seen Tanya, isn't the book, the sunshine mind, just the perfect title for her book. <laughs> if you haven't already, go and grab a copy of this book. I know you'll enjoy it if you enjoyed her approach to love because this is her approach to life. So check this out. You can order a copy on Amazon right now. And like I said before, if you haven't already, go to datingwithresults.com to get the one hour free training that I've put together for you that can help you find love this year. You don't need to run headfirst into the same mistakes that everyone else is making when they're looking for love. Whether it's burning out on dating apps, being on dates that never materialize into relationships, or just getting stuck in casual hookup mode. This is to help put you on track in your love life so that you feel in control again. Go to datingwithresults.com to sign up now, and I will see you in the next video.